X is normally distributed with the mean of 5 and a standard deviation of 1.5. Again, I really want to understand a little more deeply what this is all about. Somebody has a machine. Okay, their job, their factory produces plastic bags. Probably produces a lot of other things, but they produce plastic bags. And there's a machine that produces plastic bags. Now, how do you have, you know, obviously when you sell a bag to a, let's say, Kmart or some supermarket, you don't want to give the guy, you know, you pay, they say, I'll pay you a penny a bag or a tenth of a penny, whatever they cost. And you don't want to make the bags too strong because if you make it too strong, you're wasting a lot of plastic or whatever, and you're not going to probably go out of business. You won't we'll make a bigger, bigger profit. If you make the bags too weak, then customers will carry them. If they keep pulling out, then the came on whoever gave you the, the order for a million plastic bags won't come back to you and buy any more bags. So you obviously you have to set the machine at a proper amount so that so that you, they produce what they're supposed to produce. Now, if you set the machine, let's say you have a dial, and say, I'm going to produce at exactly 1.5 pounds, 1.500 pounds. That means the machine pulls in a certain amount of plastic, a certain amount of heat, probably, and makes the bag. Do you think every single bag is exactly 1.5000000? No, it's probably not. It's not like a, a, a working in a laboratory. It's, you know, the machine is the plastic material each day is a little bit different than the day before. The temperature, the pressure of the air. The vibration of the machine on the factory floor, maybe the, the, the accuracy of the worker who's sending it. So it's going to change slightly from, from bag to bag. If you really measure with like a, like a very like under a microscope, you might see 1.5001, 1.4999, 1.5000000. 1 you know, whatever. Be a, so somebody's saying that they have like a whole warehouse full of these bags, and they actually measured all those bags, even though it's unrealistic. And it came out the average bag was five pounds. I'm sorry, it's supposed to be 1.5 pounds. But the standard deviation was 1.5, meaning some bags were 6 pounds, some were 7 pounds, some were 8 pounds, some were 4 pounds, some were 3 pounds. There might even be a couple of 2 pounds there. Not too many of them. That's what we're supposed to calculate. Um, but, but there were a bunch of you know, smaller bags. Now, if there are too many small ones and too many customers get those bags and too many customers complain back to the supermarket, you're not, you'll lose your contract. You're going to get sued or something like that. So you want to make sure that so the question is, under these conditions, how many are going to be below 3.17? Let's say they say, you know, if it's below up, you know, above 3.17, we can live with that. Below 3.17, that's going to be a disaster. So 3.7, so how many are less than 3.17? So here's what we know about the situation so far. We know that the bags, again, if you took all those millions of bags and, and put them into a histogram, and you actually have very small, skinny categories, you would get x equals the bag strength. The average bag would be at about five, like that one, actually five. And it's, but that's not every single bag is exactly five, 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 five. It's going to be some variation. That variation is quantified at 1.5. And the question is, how many bags are going to be below 3.17? That's the question. Well, let's locate 3.7 before we know. You can just plug numbers right into a formula and get the answer if you know what you're doing. But let's think about it a little more fundamentally to get the answer from a graphical point of view, or at least estimate the answer. Where is 3.17? Well, if you go 1.5 in the other direction, how much is 5 take away 1.5? It's a hard one. 3.5, right? 3 point, so 3.5 is roughly around here, around here. So where's 3.17? Another little, another point two or three away. Point 0.3, 0.3, so roughly it's around here. You don't need that exact about it, but I would say it's roughly around here. So 3.17, 3 especially if you round this to 3.2, is a little bit to the left of 3.5, which is roughly there. So 3.17 is here, and if you leave it like this, even though you're taking advantage of the picture, I think it's more confusing than if you left it alone, because you want to shade in the corresponding area so the answer pops out at you. You don't want to leave vertical lines, you want to have a shade in the region. The shade in the region in this case is, that's the, this is the answer to the question. Well, if you remember that from here to here is 16%, oh, here, here, I think I messed this up a little bit. This is, this is 3.5 is here, so, right? This is 3.5, I'll erase it later. This is roughly one standard deviation. So this is 3.5, and we want, and if you, if you round the question to 3.2, so we we're off by 0.3. 0.3 is one fifth. Three, 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 three times three is it's like one fifth. Five times 0.3 is so one fifth is about this amount. So we really to be a little more to scale. I think my answer should have been over here. So 3.17 should have been 
over there, and we want this piece over here. So 3.17 is over there. So if you remember that from here, that a full standard deviation is 34%, and this piece is 36%, this got to be something lower than 16%, maybe 14, maybe 12%, maybe 10%, I don't know exactly, let's say, uh, I think like 10 or 12%. So my guess is about 12%. That's just a guess. But I want you to understand why you picked that as a guess. Now to get the exact amount, we're going to convert this to a second and final picture called the Z diagram, which also is a bell-shaped curve. The only difference is we label it Z as opposed to X. Middle value 0, standard deviation 1. And where does 3.17 correspond to? It's got to be roughly in the same part of the picture, then we a little bit to the left. And the exact amount is done by this formula which is x minus mu over sigma, a very complicated formula. 317 is the boundary or the, the end of the question. 3.5, I'm sorry, 5 is given to you as part of the average of the original bags. The 1.5 is given to you as the standard deviation of all those original bags. And now I need some cooperation. This is obviously negative 1 point something. 1.83. 1.83. Yeah. Now try it again. 1.22 sounds more reasonable because it won't be 1.83 is almost 2, remember? Minus 1, minus 2, but it didn't look like minus 2. 1.22, just check it out. Minus 1.22 sounds more correct. So minus 1, and then minus 1 and a fifth, 2.2 is a fifth, will be roughly around here. So minus 1.22 is here. And again, you might as well shade in the piece that you're looking for so it pops out at you. And you might as well take a second guess because if you have another, maybe you made a mistake on that guess. My guess here is also about 12%. Okay, now we're finished with all the pictures. I mean, th theoretically, we could have gone for the same immediately. You look up minus 1.22 in the back of the Z table. And Tiffany, you have the, the you can do it yourself. You have the, you have the diagram here. You have the, look up minus, on the left side of the page, minus 1.2. And then go across to column three, column 1.20, 1.21, 1.22. One point one one point one two. Point one 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 two. Yeah. Okay, so I guess that I know you're right because I guessed it to be about 12 percent, and it turns out to be 11 percent. And when you go home and you practice this, uh, now by the way, for those of you who don't, many of you have these fancy calculators, and in the calculators built the Z table, you just kind of learn how to do it. You just plug in this number. And you press the button and the area comes right out at you. Now, do we have to subtract 50 or add 50 to this number here? We're finished. That's the end of the, that's the answer to the question. And since we're doing this already, we have another five minutes. Let's do part B of this question. Uh, Nine part B, at least 3.6. You know, I, I'm going to try to do part C between 5 and 5.5, which is will we'll teach us another another 5 and 5.5. Between 5 and 5.5. So let's do part C before we leave today. The question part C is 9, 9C is x between 5 and 5.5. Well, since we have time and the space and the, and the chalk or the ink, let's do it. Let's make a new picture. The first picture is going to be the x picture. We put down what you know about the bags, then with the average is 5. And the sigma is, is 1.5. We're just repeating this picture over here. How many are between 5 and uh, where is 1? Where is 5? Well, 5 is right in the middle. Where is 5.5? 5 5.5 is 1. No, 5, 10, 15. So it's one third of the So it's we're literally one third of the way here. So 5.5 is hard to read it, but hopefully you'll write down notes. So this is 5.5. And we want this little piece over here. Now, if I took the whole from 5 to 6.5, namely with a full standard deviation, that would be 34%. So this piece here had got to be less than 34%. The question is how much lower? Anybody want to take a guess? What would be an educated guess? Like 11%. Because you're taking 34% and chopping in 3, and you're getting 11%. So that's good, because you're answering my question. I appreciate that. But it's, you're missing one important logical point that would make the answer even a little bit better. Anybody have a, want to critique uh, David's answer? Well, you're assuming that this third 
and the next third, the next third are all the same. They're taking one, but the, this is the big one. They're getting, they're going down, 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 right? So